Dirt Everyday Extras go live every weekday on Motor Trend On Demand. And you can see them all with a free 30-day trial at MotorTrendOnDemand.com. Here's an example of an episode you missed last week. This time on Dirt Everyday Extra, I'm answering viewer questions. We put the call out on our Dirt Everyday Facebook page, and I said, what do you guys want to know? Post up your questions, message me your questions, and I will print out a bunch of them and answer them. So I have about a half dozen or a dozen questions here, and I'm going to go through them all and give you a little bit of feedback on the types of stuff that you guys are apparently interested in. Uh, first question, Zach Kearns. What do y'all do with the trucks? Keep them or sell them just interested? Are you interested, Zach? Do you want to buy a truck? Is that what you're asking? So we build a lot of different projects. Um, it's different for every show, different projects. Some of them I own, some of them the company owns, some of them are owned by sponsors. It's a mixture of those things. A lot of them we keep. <clears throat> we have had to destroy and crush vehicles in the past. I hate doing that. I hate destroying a vehicle no matter what. It's one thing if we're going rock crawling and this happens. It's another thing if the thing just is junk by the time we're done with it. Uh, but we have had to do that a few times. Um, sell the vehicles. We don't do that very often, though I'm leaning up against a giant truck that I don't have a whole lot of use for. So like this truck may end up for sale someday. Why would I sell it? Because I'm dumb. And here's the problem. I should sell these vehicles and get rid of them, take that money, invest it into real estate and something that's going to pay off so that when I'm old and gray, I can still be living large and doing great things on my yacht. Probably not going to happen. I'll probably sell this truck someday, take the money, turn around, buy five other half-built junk piles of four by fours, turn them into cool stuff so that you guys have something to watch. So yes, we do sell stuff every now and then. Most of the time we keep everything, probably shouldn't. Um, moving right along, Chris Petrolopoulos question. Do you got any hookups or discounts on ARB air lockers? I wanna put one in my extra Xterra and those things not cheap. Uh, Mr. Petrolopoulos, I don't. I, don't, I can't really give a deal to you, Chris, and then I have to give a deal to everybody. And honestly, all of those companies that we work with, like they're out there like you, trying to make a living. But I can tell you right now, the ARB guys have a special deal going on where if you buy an air locker, you get a uh, air compressor. It's like the other parts that you need for the air locker. I don't know how long this deal is going on, so get a hold of ARB right away if you want to get an air locker. And I also don't know if they have one for the Xterra. I assume they do, because they make a lot of stuff for a lot of imports, like Toyotas and Nissans and stuff. So they may have something for your Xterra. I really like the ARB air lockers. I've had them in a bunch of rigs. They are tough, they work really good. You need to make sure the plumbing is done well, but once it's done well, you can turn on your air locking differentials and go awesome places. So definitely look into that. Moving right along. Kyle, you've got to take my 2006 Toyota Prius and raise it and make it an off-road Prius. Probably not going to do that, Kyle. Um, you should take your Prius and trade it in on a really cool 4x4. It's, honestly, it's cool to do those types of things, but at the end of the day, if you want a vehicle you can take off-road and really depend on, you should probably start with a 4x4. We built stuff like our Roadrunner that's four-wheel drive. We did a lot of work to it. The, the return on investment isn't there. Like your Prius, all the things that make your Prius a Prius, like great fuel economy, you will not have that if you lift it and put big tires on it and make it four-wheel drive. It's not going to work the same. So rather than try and make a Prius into something it's not, get rid of the Prius, get yourself a real 4x4, go four-wheeling. You can get yourself a really good two-wheel drive too, like one with a selectable rear locker, like the Toyota Pre-Runner Edition Tacomas. Those things are amazingly great off-road. I personally always try to push people towards a four-wheel drive. More capability, more cool places you can go. Ronald Pelletier. Hey guys, your show is amazing. I'm from Quebec. I speak French. That's cool. And I got a 1989 GMC Sierra short bed step side single cab. And it's on a 2005 GMC Sierra frame with a 5.3 liter. I did everything on my own, kind of fast project. 13 years. Yep, moving right along, just like my projects. I'm looking for a four or five inch lift kit. I want to know what is the best bang for the buck that you got in mind? Keep on trucking. Um, <clears throat> I get these questions a lot. What's the best whatever for my truck? The best locker, the best winch, the best bumper, the best suspension kit, the best tire. I have not used every single tire, lift kit, suspension, winch, 
anything in the business. I've used a lot of them. There's certain ones that I like, but I'm, I can't say that they're the best ones because everybody's a little bit different. And I'm not really, like I'm not a spokesperson for all of these different companies or any one company. So I try a lot of different things. I personally think the best bang for your buck is to build your GMC Sierra into a four x four that uses, that has a solid front axle. Um, you, this is much more than a four or five inch lift kit. This is a huge fabricating project where you cut all the independent suspension out of the front end and you put a solid beam front axle under there. Uh, there's a company that I've worked with in the past. My buddies at Fabworks Off-Road, they make this type of kit so that you can do this, but <clears throat> As far as just a lift kit, just to clear bigger tires, there's tons of companies that offer that for your project. So if you wanna go extreme, you wanna put a solid axle up front, put big tires on, you can really use it off-road. Go check out the guys at Fabworks. If you're just looking for a lift kit, pick up the latest issue of Four Wheel and Off-Road Magazine, go through the advertisers. There's tons of different companies that offer that type of kit. I'm not going to pick just one because I haven't done, I haven't done a shootout between all of the different suspensions. So don't expect me to pick just one. Um, you guys can ask me my opinion and I will give you my opinion, but I can't say this is the best of whatever. Uh, moving to Vegelis Cavadas. Hi, Frank. Hey, my name's Fred, but your name's Vagelis or whatever. Hi, Frank. My name is Vagelis and I am from Greece originally, but I live in Boulder, Colorado. I started watching your show on Netflix and I felt in love with all this amazing trails and great job. Thanks. Um, I feel, felt in love too. I recently got in 2014 Jeep Wrangler Sahara. It's my first 4x4 looking into going on trail trips with my dog and myself. Don't have any idea where though. Any suggestions, ideas? Thanks again for the amazing tracks and info. So you wanna get into four wheeling and you don't know anybody or anything about it. Um, lots of things you can do. Pick up magazines, off-road magazines. They often will feature shops or trail off-road trail ride events. So those are good ways. Um, get on the internet, there's tons of forums for different types of um, vehicles, like there's probably a Jeep owners and a uh, Toyota owners and a Ford monster truck owners forum. So you can go to those places. Also, go to your local four wheel drive shops, grab the phone book, if they even still offer that, and go find some local four wheel drive shops. Go talk to those guys and be like, hey, I'm new to this, I wanna go four wheeling. Where do I get started? Like, where are the trails locally that are legal to use? Are there any Jeep clubs or 4x4 clubs for my personal type of vehicle that I can go along with? Do you guys ever take newbies and new guys that are getting into the sport and then want to go four-wheeling? You're in Colorado. Colorado has tons of awesome trails. Go to the local bookstore and see if there's any book of off-road trails. Google it. Um, go to Amazon, go to the four wheel drive shops. Those guys sell books of maps for cool off-road trails all over Colorado. There's clubs in Colorado. And you're also close to Utah. Utah has the Moab. Moab is my favorite town in Utah. And coming up the week leading up to Easter is Moab Easter Jeep Safari. It's the one of the biggest Jeep events in America. All these Jeepers from all over the country come to Moab. Moab's beautiful. It's a really cool town, small town, red rocks, cool trails. You can sign up with the Red Rock four wheelers and get go on a tour trail, or you can go out on your own. Um, so that's an event that I would definitely check out. Thank you, Vagelis, for writing in. Um, good luck with your Jeep. <clears throat> Next is CJ David Levesque. Is tube sock a manual or automatic? Tube sock is a manual transmission. It has an AX15. It used to have an AX5 when it was a four cylinder gas. Now it has an AX15, which is a five speed behind the four cylinder diesel. Um, I, people ask me all the time, what do you like better, manual or automatic? I don't really have a preference. Um, I think the more power you have, uh, an automatic seems to work better. Uh, the less power, it's more fun to have a manual because you can choose the gear that you want. Um, the more gearing options you have, it's better for a smaller engine. So if you have just a four cylinder, that's why like Toyotas are really popular to have like a 22 RE four cylinder engine. And then they have a manual transmission and dual transfer cases behind that. So having manual transmissions with less power 
a smaller power plant seems to work out better. Uh, for vehicles that I have with big power, like my Avalanche has an 8.1 or my Army truck that has an 8.1 or my summer camp Jeep that has that supercharged 6.2 liter, all of those trucks have automatics. Um, I'm a big fan of the 4L80, which is a four speed, has an overdrive, but it's very similar to the Turbo 400 GM automatic transmission. Really strong, beefy transmissions. They can be built really well. <clears throat> um, so most of the time, I don't really have an opinion. It doesn't matter to me. You can run a manual, you can run an automatic. They're different driving styles. And I think it's really important that if you're getting into four wheeling or learning to drive, all you kids out there, bug your parents, tell them you wanna learn how to drive stick shift. Stick shift is a cool thing to know how to do. It allows you to do different things off road than an automatic transmission does. So dive into whatever you have, but also be open to trying different things. Get behind the wheel of something with a manual transmission and learn how to drive it. That is a trait that not a lot of people, it's kind of a dying trend, but I think it's still really important to know how to do. That's it for today's Dirt Every Day Extra. We are gonna do more questions next time, and you never know, I got all types of projects. Oh, and I still got this big Ford, if anybody really wants it, it's gonna be for sale. It's got seating for like four, six, and the bed is big, you can take all of your kids. You got like 13 kids living out in the woods or the swamps. Look at these giant swamp tires, perfect for you. I don't really, I don't want to sell it because then I'll buy a bunch of other junk I don't need. That's it for Dirt Everyday Extra. See you next time. If you need more Dirt Everyday Extra, go sign up for a 30-day free trial right now.